Okay, so my name is Catherine McBride. I'm obviously your instructor for the course, right? Um, just a little bit about me. I've been teaching for National University for almost 10 years. Before that and after that, I've taught for a lot of other universities, both online and on site. Um, I love teaching this beginning class because there's a lot about not just learning the material, but figuring out how to learn accounting, period, and, and let alone learn it in four weeks. So I really enjoy this. Um, I really enjoy teaching this class. Michael, can you hear? So Amy, check your speaker. Sorry, Mikkel. I'm going to pause the recording for a second. So I also have, I have an undergraduate degree in accounting. I have a master's degree in business. I have a doctorate in accounting, which honestly, I, I promise sounds worse than it is. Amy, can you hear us? Can you hear us now? Okay, let's see, where was I? I um, doctorate in accounting, promise you it's harder than it's, it's easier than it sounds. Um, I am, I have a full-time job as a dean at a different university. Wow, that virtual background's making me jealous, Amy. <laughs> um, and let's see, personally, I have, two teenagers. My son just graduated from high school. It was kind of anticlimactic since there was no graduation. Um, I'm married, have been for almost 19 years. My daughter's a junior in high school. Well, I guess almost a senior, right? That's so hard to believe. Um, I have a lot of experience with online, even from a student's perspective, because I did my doctorate online and my daughter and son both went to um, high school online. So we've, we've been immersed in this world. One of the things that you will notice is that you have my cell phone number on the course outline, which I should be sharing. Is that what you see on the screen, the course outline? Okay, the reason my cell phone number is there is because you're welcome to call it. Now, there is a, I live in, I live in Michigan. My, my cell phone number is a Colorado number, but I live in Michigan. You do not have to worry about the time zone but you do have to be aware that if you're working on stuff at 11 o'clock at night, your time, which is you know, a perfectly normal time to be doing schoolwork, um, I will be in bed. So you won't bother me if you text me, I'll see it in the morning, but that's the only thing about the time difference you need to be aware of. Other than that, I'm never up at one or two, but I'm quite often up at midnight and sometimes I'll even answer your, your call depending on what, what point in the semester we're in. So that's why my phone number's there. You're welcome to use it. And if you wonder if it's too late, you're welcome to text me. Actually, texting me has become the best way to connect because of my full-time job. But even that job is working from home. So I'm able to answer phone calls and help you during the day sometimes also. Let's see, anything else about me that you're wondering? No. Okay, how do you feel about taking accounting? Hmm, <laughs> I can see Michael, Michael doesn't even have to talk. <laughs> Amy, how do you feel? It's been very stressful. <laughs> Okay. All right. Um, John, AJ, if you're muted, you can just hit the space bar. John already figured that out. It just seems like a lot of material as I started to make my way through it. It is a lot of material. So I'm going to go over the course outline, but then I'm going to, I'm going to explain a modification that I've made. So I've been with national forever and I developed this course years ago and I found out two days before the course started, that they just redeveloped it and they undid something that I had intentionally done. And so I've gone back and I've really thought whether 
it's a problem or what I should do about it. And so I have a, I have a solution. So in the course outline, you obviously have the book, which is an ebook. Um, the learning outcomes, there's a lot, right? But if you read through these, these kind of, they're exciting because they tell you what you don't know now. But the exciting part is at the end of the course, when you look back at them, it's like, oh my gosh, I know that. Oh, I can do that. Um, I promise you're going to learn a lot. And we go through the material together. You already found the synchronous session. So here's the way the course is structured and we're gonna, we're gonna look at Blackboard. So Learn Smart is combined with the textbook and it kind of, um, students either really love it or really don't like it. So I'm willing to talk if you really don't like it, but um, it takes you interactively through the textbook. It also like asks you preview questions and like points you in the direction of things that you don't know. Um, so a lot of students find it very helpful. It's set up to take really no more than 30 minutes. It's like, um, it's a shortened version of reading the textbook. It probably ends up taking longer because you go through it more than once. So then after Learn Smart are the practice exercises. The practice exercises are designed to be done before you really learn the material. That's why they're called practice. The point of the practice exercises is to help you learn the material. So in the practice exercises, you have unlimited attempts. Um, they're, they're, the concepts are broken down into smaller pieces and you can really work with it. There's also a lot of resources there that I'll show you. Like there's a help me solve this um, or walk me through it. And when you click on that, it plays a video that walks you through a problem exactly like what you're doing. There's a link where, you know, can, you can say, take me to the textbook and it takes you directly to the textbook. But in a lot of ways, it's kind of like sitting there working your problems with the instructor right next to you where, you know, it's like, wait, I don't understand this. Okay, let me look. The homework, you have three opportunities to check your work. So that's still formative. It's still in the learning process, trying to make sure that you've understood everything. The homework takes um, concepts and, and puts them together in bigger pieces. So they take longer. The, the questions take a lot longer than the practice does. So be aware of that when you look at how many questions there are. I don't think I can just breeze through them because they're not like that. Um, there's still resources there to help you with them, and there's still um, the three opportunities to check your work. And then the first three weeks, there's a quiz, and then there's a final exam in the last week. The quizzes cover what was covered each week of the course. The final exam is cumulative. So the really good thing about the final exam being cumulative is that I take the final exam and I replace your um, lowest quiz score with it. Because I figure that if you've gone all the way through um, and there was something that you didn't understand, but you can show that you mastered it by the final exam, then I'll go ahead and go back and give you points on the quiz that you didn't do well on. All of these content, all of this content is in the lab environment. There's a link in our course to go to it. There is a, um, course project, which is a short paper to write. And there are um, discussion boards each week. So the discussion boards, you have to respond to the initial question and then respond to one more person during the week. Okay, so this just talks about the Learn Smart, the practice exercises, Blackboard. Um, I don't use Blackboard Collaborate. I like Zoom because it's more stable and I can post it outside of the course. So if you need to look back on anything um, <clears throat> later, you have access to it. Or if for some reason, you know, you get an incomplete in the course, you can still access the, the lectures. Um, so this is, this is the time frame. So if you look at the practice schedule, you can kind of see how I've broken down the weeks. So like theoretically, we would talk about chapter one, two, and three this week, and then, you know, chapter four and five next week, and so, and six. 
So when you look at these, the good thing about them is that um, you, can, you can kind of see the spread. And then also, when you look at this, like exercise 1-7, these apply to the synchronous session problems. And if what they mean is, if you went in your textbook and you looked, this, this one means chapter one, seven means number seven, and the exercises, exercises, there will be like exercises, problems, brief exercises. So if you went to exercise 1-7, applying the accounting equation, it would look just like what you're doing in the lab environment. But the lab is typically, um, the numbers will change. So the concepts will be the same, the question will be the same, but the numbers will be different. But you can kind of see what, you know, you can quiz yourself this way too. But that, that's what the concepts are being covered. If you go down, here to the homework, you can see the same thing and you can see here they're all problems, but um, you can also see like in week one, we're doing chapter one, two, and three, and week two, four, five, and six, um, and so on. All right, so here's, here's, the, here's the change. I had chapter one, two, and 12 in week one, and I did chapter three in week two. And the reason I did chapter three in week two is because going all the way through the accounting cycle in one week, I've never had it work successfully. So what I'm doing is the week one quiz will be open through the end of week two. I also set it up where you have two attempts on it. So the week one quiz will be open all the way to the end of week two. You're probably going to want to take it either at the end of week two or in the middle of week two. Um, but we are, we're going to cover this, the, this material at a pace that you're able to learn it and practice it. Okay. <clears throat> also, all of the due dates, I don't, I think they, Okay, they did loosen this up. So anything that says you have to do it at a specific time, which I, which now I see they, they changed that. Um, I don't require anything at a specific time. Like you can do the quiz anytime by Sunday at midnight. I mean, I highly recommend not doing the quiz until you learn the material or until we cover all the material and until you do the homework, but it's open all week. And that's because I know some of you have time on Saturday, some of you have time on Sunday. Um, also, if you ever get to the weekend and something's going on where you cannot successfully take that quiz, and I know that right now is really a crazy time. You know, the kids have been home from school. Um, we're finishing up semesters while we try to homeschool our children. Um, people have been off work. Some are just now returning. Other people aren't. You know, it's really a crazy time. So if there's anything that comes up that affects your ability to like do that quiz or perform, call me, let me know, touch bases, because I'm happy to help you if there's any way that I can, but I can't help you if I don't know about it. So please, please, please reach out. Um, the final exam the last day of class is Saturday, but you can actually take the final exam on Saturday or Sunday. It's fine with me. We will um, review that when we get there. I do quiz reviews on Thursdays, so you'll have a complete review for every quiz. Now let me show you the other really important thing. Let's look at, let's look at Blackboard. So here's our course. So we start with the home page. The important thing here is if we go to the announcements, I really use these. And what I have done is I have done short videos that go over all of the main concepts in the course. Now, you're not going to, so you, I have a lot of announcements here that you won't see yet. But like I posted a lot of resources for you. This is on the accounting equation. But I have a lot of videos posted like here for week one. I posted just, just short videos. This is on the accounting assumptions and principles. I did one on the accounting equation with, you know, like our homework assignment. I did one introducing the financial statements using our PowerPoints. I did one with practicing journal entries. Here's more practice of journal entries, 
cash versus accrual accounting, you know, and here's all the adjusting entries. So every one of these videos is, these are the ones that are not available yet. Every one of these videos is short and only talks about that one topic and uses our course resources to do it. And the reason that I did those is because digging back through a hour, hour and a half long, you know, class meeting, live class meeting, isn't an effective way of finding the material. So these videos are an excellent go-to resource. So then the other thing is, so if we go to week one, oh, I wanted to show you course, well, let me see if they're in week one's too also, since they redid the course right before I got it. Okay, so the PowerPoint for each, he didn't fix those. Okay, so a couple of things. Um, like, be careful here. We added chapter three, but there's no PowerPoint here. But if you go to course resources, you will find all the, like here's all of the PowerPoints for every single chapter. So if something's missing, you can go there. Here's some good templates. Um, well, there's my accounting equation. APA guide for when you're writing the paper, my key ratios. This is a really good, even if we don't use this, you should grab this key ratios explained and set up in Excel and keep it. It's one of the best ones that I've ever seen. It tells you, it explains the ratios and it tells you um, what they mean and what increases and decreases them. It's a phenomenal. And then these are websites that you can use for the, um, the project. So, so there's a lot here, but the first thing is like, here's, here's all the PowerPoints if there's something that you need that isn't in the week. Um, the other thing is when I developed this course, before they redeveloped it. Um, I actually put these videos in from principlesofaccounting.com. This was, and, and he's good. Most, most of my students say he goes too fast, but um, I did these videos here before I made individual videos and posted them. So I would just watch the videos that I did that are in the announcements. I wouldn't have put these here if I had done all of those before. Okay, any questions so far? All right, so what we're doing this week is we're looking at, we're starting with the, um, the accounting equation, assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity, and we're gonna go all the way through the financial statements, adjusting entries, journal entries, adjusting entries, I mean, just, which is too much for one week, but we're gonna first go to, so if you, is there anybody here who hasn't gotten into the book? Okay, good, everybody's good there. All right, so this is Learn Smart. So I'm gonna go into the first synchronous session and I saw that several people started it and if I'm, if I'm correct, I bet a lot of you are the ones that have. So I wanna show you and we'll look at these together. But I do want to show you the resources so you know what's there. What? Current attempts, one of unlimited. Okay. I'm like, wait, they didn't change that, did they? No. So here I can go to the ebook and it will take me directly to where the ebook is. Um, this one doesn't have a video, but, and we're actually not going to work this one, but see, this is identifying accounting principles and assumptions. This is directly off of that one video that I did. So for a selected transaction, oh wow, these are all different. Where's the, okay. 
Okay, remember how I said that the questions on the course outline match what's here? They don't. Has anybody done the second, um, the second synchronous session? I want to see what it is real quick, because I'm going to have to take a different approach. <clears throat> Okay. <clears throat> okay, we're going to look at the We're going to look at the PowerPoints and cover a couple of highlights before we look at those. And I see that they don't have walk me through it on there. So I'm going to make sure I go and add that resource. <clears throat> All right. Am I sharing PowerPoint? Am I yes? No, I'm not. Okay, so I want to cover highlights. We know the importance of accounting. Look here. By the way, if you want to look at accounting principles and assumptions, I posted this on the videos also. So these two slides will answer all of those questions that you were, that I just ran through really quickly without doing yet. Here we go. A quick question. Um, yep. the synchronous sessions, there's nothing there when you go to that section and collaborate. So because I'm, I'm not using collaborate, I'm using oh, Zoom. Okay. Yeah, I use Zoom because I can post it. Um, outside of the classroom and give you access longer. Okay. okay, this is the accounting equation. The accounting equation is the backbone of the balance sheet. It's also the backbone of accounting. The thing about the accounting equation is that it absolutely positively always balances. And so what we have to do is we have to think about all right, so we know assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. So now what we want to think about is when we're looking at this, every single accounting equation can be put into this format. So the first thing we have to do is we have to understand what are assets, what are liabilities, and what are equity. So assets are things that a company can use for future benefit. So what are some examples of assets that you can think of? that come to mind. And it's okay for it to be new. Land. Oh, very good. 
land is an asset. I'll give you an easy Cash. one. <laughs> yes, thank you. How about accounts receivable? What else? If land is an asset, what other things are assets? Equipment. Yep. All our buildings. Inventory. All of these are assets. <clears throat> so an asset is something that provides a future benefit for us. <clears throat> okay, now liabilities is just like it is at, in your own life. It's something that we owe, something that we're going to use an asset to settle in the future. So what are some examples of liabilities? Accounts payable. Yep. What else? How about notes payable? Is taxable accounts? Tax payable is. Salary payable or wages payable. Notice that with um, liabilities, you quite often have the word payable. <clears throat> it's almost always a clue that that's a liability. Now, equity is, is more complicated because under equity, which explains why we can use all four parts of the, the, why the accounting equation will record any accounting transaction in its entirety. Under equity, Here's equity. We actually have four parts. So, oops, I'm not sitting at my desk. So we have we have four parts. Okay, let me just erase that since we can't read it that way. And try this again. <clears throat> we have four parts. So these two parts, the first two parts here, have to do with um, like contributions, right? Or withdrawals. These, these are amounts that are directly put in or taken out of the company. They have nothing to do with operating the business. Their, you know, stock is sold or an owner puts money in. The second part has to do with operating the business. And these become part of retained earnings. The revenue and expenses is also what makes up the income statement. So the way this works is equity, if you think about equity, the idea is that if we sold off our assets, use that money to pay our liabilities, what we have left is equity. So with equity, if, if an owner puts money in, that increases equity. So common stock increases equity. If an owner takes money out, that decreases equity. So dividends decrease equity. Revenue increases equity and expenses decrease equity. So there aren't a lot of common stock dividend or revenue accounts, but there are expense accounts. So what are some examples of expenses that you can think of? Rent. Rent expense, yep. Supplies. Supplies expense. I'll add insurance expense, wages expense. Oops. So tax expense. Marketing. Marketing. Yep. Okay, so here's an interesting thing that a lot of students struggle with. 
a lot of students struggle with comprehending the difference between liabilities and expenses. <clears throat> so here's the way this works. When you have an expense, like take tax expense, when you have an expense, you do one of two things. You, you've incurred the expense, so you're going to record the expense. And on the other side, one of two things happens. Either you pay it now, which means you reduce cash, or you pay it later, which means you have a liability. So if you pay it later, now you have like salary payable, taxes payable. So that's how they, I mean, they are similar because they're related to each other, but that's how they're different. You're recording the expense when it's incurred. And if you haven't satisfied payment of that expense, then you also have a liability because you're going to pay it later. All right, that's the accounting equation. Let's see what else is here. And if you look at um, what's on the, I'll show you, in the course announcements, there's, a, there's a two special accounts I want to talk about. Okay, so the first thing that this chapter does, and it's a really good idea to go through it, is this chapter goes through transactions and they break them down into pieces. And, and the, this, is the, this is important because what they break them down into is the same thought process that I like to teach. So there's a thought process when you're doing these, when you're analyzing these transactions. which is something you're gonna use heavily over the next couple of weeks. So the first thing that you ask yourself is, what happened? And a lot of students get tripped up on this very first step and don't answer questions correctly because they got tripped up on the very first step. Because the first thing that you have to understand is, what happened? And so you should be able to put the transaction into your own words. For instance, here, Chas Taylor has invested $30,000 cash to start a company. Okay, what happened? Well, there was somebody that wanted to start a company, and so he had $30,000. He put that into the company, and now he's going to grow this company. In this case, it's a corporation, so he has stock. So the first thing is what happened? So he has put money in, and they've given him, given him stock. So the next thing is, what accounts are affected? And by that, I mean the specific accounts. So in this case, you say, okay, what accounts are affected? Cash and common stock. Those are the two accounts that I'm dealing with. Sometimes there's more than two, but there will always be at least two because it has to balance. It can't balance if there aren't two. The third question, I, I do it this way. I'm like, did it increase or decrease? I, I do that one. So then I'm like, okay, well, cash increased, common stock also increased. So see, so you can balance if they both increase. Then the fourth question is, what type of account? So what type of account? The cash is an asset, common stock is equity. And then the part that we're not doing here, but you will be doing very shortly, um, is do you debit it or credit? And I'm going to tell you right now, because you're going to get into debits and credits this week, um, you do not memorize debits and credits. You want to use the resource sheet that's provided um, in the announcements that shows you when you debit an account and when you credit an account. Because this is a man-made equation. It balances because it's a man-made equation. So no matter how long you look at debits and credits and try to figure out why it increases or decreases, you're really spinning your wheels. It's kind of like why is two plus two four? 
Also, this is a subject that takes practice anyway, so you won't be good at it by the time you finish this course, and that's okay. Um, it takes more than four weeks to get good at, is it a debit or credit? So the idea is not for you to be able to do it without looking. The idea is for you to be able to do it and get the answer right using the resources that you have. So I would go through the PowerPoints for this chapter because the first thing they do is they walk you through each transaction and then in the next chapter we're going to go through the same transactions but we're going to do debits and credits. So this is a really good place to first walk through those transactions. I'm going to pull up chapter two. What the heck? Go away. And share it. Okay, this chapter goes over the steps in the accounting cycle. There's, there's three slides here that are good for, um, that are good for reminding you like what type of accounts, what accounts are in each category. But the thing that I wanna do here is talk to you about debits and credits. Okay, so this is called a T account. It's called a T account because it looks like a T. Now, for anybody who has had accounting before and found debits and credits difficult, I'm going to make them simple. Debit means left, credit means right. It, it truly does. It has no other meaning than that. Um, I, I like to joke and say, you know, as accountants, we like to make things complicated, right? Well. So we gave them fancy names. Also, just so you know, the abbreviation for debit is DR and the abbreviation for credit is CR. Now that makes sense if you look at credit, right? But it doesn't make sense if you look at debit. But the reason that those are the abbreviations is because they're actually from the Latin words deber and credere. So that's why it's DR and CR. All right, so this is a T account. The left-hand side is always a debit. The right-hand side is always a credit. They do not mean increase or decrease. And the reason I say that is because debits increase some accounts and decrease other accounts. Credits increase some accounts and decrease other accounts. So debit doesn't mean increase or decrease. It depends on the account that you're dealing with. So this is a good example of what you could use, but we're gonna, we're gonna expand it. This is like the basic part. So if we look at assets, liabilities, and equity, in general, assets are increased with the debit and decreased with the credit. Liabilities and equity are the opposite. They are both increased with credits and decreased with debits. Now you see the word normal, that's there because if I asked you what is the normal balance of an account, I am not looking for um, a number or I'm looking for debit or credit. So the normal balance of an account is whatever side increases it. So like with assets, assets are increased with a debit. So the normal balance for a debit account is an asset. The normal balance for an asset account is a debit. If you were looking at the account, you would expect to see a debit balance. Like for instance, if you had cash and it had a credit balance, that means you're overdrawn. You couldn't have a negative balance, a credit balance for a building, for instance, because that would mean that you have less than no building. This is the sheet that you wanna use to 
have next to you, including during class, for when we do debits and credits. I think it's also on page 69 in your textbook. So this is the thing that I would print out, laminate, whatever, but have it with me and always look at it, always refer to it. When we work through things together, I'll tell you, okay, now go look at the, you know, your resource sheet and, and tell me, is it an increase or a decrease? So what I want to do here is I want to look at, I'm going to make it bigger, I want to look at um, what happens with equity because equity is the funny one. So we already know that in general, right, we just said that equity in general is increased with a credit and decreased with a debit. I like arrows instead of plus and minus. <clears throat> okay, so now when we look at the equity accounts, you're going to notice something interesting. So common stock and revenue behave that way. They're increased with a credit and decreased with a debit. Which makes sense because they increase equity. But if you look at dividends and expenses, they behave the opposite. Dividends are increased with a debit and decreased with a credit. And so are expenses. And the reason for that is that they don't increase equity. Both of these decrease equity. So they behave in an opposite manner. All right, so that's our resource sheet. So now, one more thing to show you. Are we doing okay so far? So we keep track of a lot of transactions in um, T accounts in the textbook. But that's not how it really works in the real world. In the real world, we have to write down transactions in what's called a journal entry. And the way we write down a journal entry is that you have the date over here, which you're not going to have to do too much in the homework. In the real world, you always do it, right? And then the debit is off to the left and the credit is off to the right. Just like over here, the debit column is to the left and the credit column is to the right. So when I looked at this, I can see, okay, cash, I know that it increased because cash is an asset and assets increase with the debit. So when I look at this, I can say, okay, cash increased and common stock also increased. I know that because I know common stock is equity and it's increased with the credit. So the thing about the general journal, which is where we record journal entries, is that it is in chronological order. It is the only statement, it is the only working paper, it's the only anything that's in chronological order. So in other words, we keep recording it by date, December 1st, December 2nd, on down. Okay, so we obviously can't use this to figure out the balance of an account because it would, we'd have to flip through a lot of pages and you know add them up and that, that wouldn't make a lot of sense. So this is where we record what happened in the general journal. And then the next thing that happens is we break those accounts apart. <clears throat> we're going to take each account and we're going to post it into what's called the general ledger. So the general ledger, get a pen. So we're going to post to the general ledger and that's this. And the general ledger has a separate account place for every single um, account. So like we have cash and it'll have 
all of the transactions that went into cash, not just one. It'll have common stock and it'll have all the transactions that went into common stock. So like if you looked at cash, you'd see all the increases, all the decreases, and you'd see the balance. So what happens is you take this journal entry and you say, okay, I have a debit in cash. I'm gonna to go to the general ledger and I'm going to debit cash $30,000. And here I have a credit to common stock. So I'm going to go down to my common stock general ledger and credit it $30,000. So now I can look for my balance. And I can say, oh, we have a $30,000 balance in cash or, oh, we have a $30,000 balance in common stock. So that's how transactions get recorded before we ever get to the financial statements. All right, how are we doing now? I know a lot of stuff, right? <clears throat> All right, so here, and we'll practice that elsewhere, but here um, they're going through each one of the transactions that they went through in chapter one. And in chapter one, they didn't do debits and credits. They just did what the accounts were, did they increase or decrease. But here, when you look at it, you have the debit and the credit for the transaction. Although you should still when you when you work this like you could start with chapter two for the transactions but you should still work this by thinking you know what happened okay what two accounts are affected you know the way it would look the way it would look if i worked this which i do in the videos but the way it would work if i worked this is i would say okay what two accounts all right we have cash and we have common stock all right now i'm going to ask you questions did the cash increase or decrease? Increased. Increased. It increased. The company has more cash now than before. All right, I'm using this was an, one as an example because common stock is sometimes tricky. Did common stock increase or decrease? Increased. It increased. Good. A lot of people think it decreased because we sold it, but what we're really doing is keeping track of equity. Expenses are the same way. When you have an expense, you're keeping track of how much of that expense you've had. So even though you're paying it, the expense itself increased. You still had more expense. All right, so cash increased, common stock increased. What type of account is cash? Asset, liability, or one of the equity accounts? Asset. It's an asset. Now with equity, you can't just say equity. So here, like I would say, you know, it's equity and it's common stock. And the reason is because revenue, expenses, common stock and dividends, depending on what they are, they do debits and credits differently. So now I'm looking at this and it's like, okay, if I have an, now the account itself doesn't matter. All that matters is if I have an asset and it increases, do I debit it or credit it? Debit. I debit it. If I have common stock and it increases, do I debit it or credit it? Credit. Credit. Now, there's a couple of ways that you know that. One is you'd look at your resource sheet. The other way you know it is debits and credits must always equal each other. There's never an exception because if it was, it wouldn't balance, right? So they have to always equal each other. So now what I have is cash, I'm going to debit cash and credit common stock. And that's what I did here. I debited cash and I credited common stock for $30,000. And if you looked at the accounting equation, I increased an asset, $30,000. I didn't do anything to liabilities and I increased equity. $30,000. See how that works? So working through these, I would do that because they're really, it, it seems like it takes longer, but it doesn't because if you don't do this, you won't learn it, you won't remember it, you won't get the answers right. So it really saves you time in the long run. Okay, and last but not least,
the financial statements. <clears throat> Okay, the financial statements have to be prepared in a certain order. The reason, I don't know what's going on at the bottom of that, the reason that they have to be prepared in a certain order is because numbers flow from one to the other. So I wanted to point out a couple of things on the statement. So first of all, notice you start out with the name of the company and then the statement name. Most of the statements are for a period of time. So this is a period of time. The one statement that isn't is the balance sheet. And it makes sense because if you're thinking about income, it has to be over a period of time, right? So you have your revenues, you list those, get a total, you have your expenses, you list those. And then the number here that we can't see is our net income. Now, I wanna, since we're here, I'm gonna point something else out. When you do these schedules, you might see the numbers look kind of oddly organized to you. You only put a dollar sign when you start a column that you're gonna add up and when you put it and when you get a total. And journal entries have no dollar signs. They don't need them, it just clutters up the paper. They have no dollar signs because we know they're in dollars. We're recording money. So what this says is, I'm gonna start adding up here, 5,800 plus 300, okay, my total's going over here is 6,100. For salaries, 1,400 plus 1,000 plus, plus 305 is 2,705. This doesn't have a dollar sign because net income is gonna have a dollar sign. Also, when you see a double underline, it means, okay, we're done. So the purpose of the income statement is to tell us what net income is. We have to do the income statement first because net income has to go on the statement of retained earnings. Now, if you forgot this and you did it anyway, the wrong way, it wouldn't matter because you would get to a point where you were missing a number and so you backed up, right? So here's what happens. We have our net income, $3,395. Statement of retained earnings. So the statement of retained earnings is also for a period of time. And this is the only statement that has a zero when there's a zero balance. And the reason it has a zero and we show it is because this means that it's the first year of operations. So we started with nothing in retained earnings. You always have retained earnings plus net income minus dividends gives you ending retained earnings. The reason you have to do this statement second is because this ending retained earnings is gonna to go to our balance sheet. <clears throat> so now we're on our balance sheet and our balance sheet is a little bit different. So the balance sheet is always a picture in time. It's a specific point in time. And the reason it is a specific point in time is think about the, the accounts on here. Like if I asked you how much cash do you have, I couldn't say for the month ending December 31st, 2017, how much cash did you have during the month? Because you'd be saying when specifically. So we're looking at assets and liabilities, so we have to pick a specific point in time, so it's always the last day, right? So that's one thing. And then here's our accounting equation. Assets, and notice we get a total for assets. Liabilities and equity, we add those two together and we get a total, and these equal each other. So that's our balance sheet. All right. Do the financial statements make sense in a they're totally brand new and I have to work with them sort of way? Okay, so now I haven't looked at adjusting entries yet. Because frankly, there's simply no way to do adjusting entries when you haven't done journal entries. So 
Now I'm going to go back here. And I'm actually going to go to synchronous session two first. And we're going to look at how some of these work. <clears throat> Okay, so in synchronous session two, we're looking at debits and credits. So we want to know the type of account, the normal balance, and does it increase with a debit or a credit? And these would be the same, by the way. So, um, but it's good practice. So what type of account is cash? Asset, liability, equity, revenue, or expense? Asset. Asset. Oh, and I, and I actually meant land, but they're both assets. What type of account is legal expense? Think, equity. look at what's in it. Look at, it is part of equity, but they actually give us another category, revenue and expense. So it, it is part of equity, but it's an expense. Prepaid insurance is a different type of account. It's on the list that I put in the announcements. Prepaid insurance is an asset because what happens with prepaid insurance is, let's say we are buying an insurance policy, a six month insurance policy, and we pay for it in advance. That's what prepaid insurance is. And since we paid for it in advance, we spent the money, but we haven't used the insurance yet. So it's an asset because there's a future benefit. Either we get to use insurance in the future, right? Or they're gonna have to give us our money back. But that's why prepaid insurance is an asset. Okay. What is accounts receivable? Liability. It, well, that accounts payable is a liability. If we're gonna receive oh. something, what is that? Asset. Yep, Equity. it's okay to be Equity. wrong. Oh, no, equity. asset. The oh. revenue would be part of equity. But the receivable, so revenue is part of equity. And when we have, when we earn revenue, one of two things happens. Either we're paid the cash for it, right? Or we're going to be paid later. Like we invoice hmm. them net 30 or whatever. So the equity piece is that we've earned revenue. And the other side of that, in this case, is the account receivable they're going to pay us later. That's a future benefit. So accounts receivable is an asset. What about dividends? Equity. 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 License fee revenue. And there's a hint in that word. Revenue. Equity. Revenue. Rev okay, it is part of equity, but we're separating equity. it. We also have revenue. It's revenue because it says revenue. Okay, now unearned revenue is the only account that says revenue that is not revenue. What unearned revenue is, re unearned revenue is a liability. What that is, is let's say that um, I used to make cushions, manufacture cushions. I had a company that manufactured cushions for the outdoors and we sold them to retail, commercial, wholesale customers and five-star resorts and furniture manufacturers. So when I would sell them to a resort, you know, they'd write me a $40,000 check up front. And then they pay the other 50% when we deliver them. So I get that $40,000 check. Have I earned any revenue yet? No, I haven't. In order to earn the revenue, I need to manufacture the cushions, right? But I'm going to record mm -hmm. that, that money. I'm going to record the cash. And that's called unearned revenue. And it's a liability because I owe something. I either owe them their cushions, right? Or they're going to want their money back. So that's why unearned revenue is a liability. Okay, what is fees earned? <clears throat> Think of what it is if we earn it. That's good. The cash that comes in would be the asset. 
this is the part that we earn. If we earn something, it's revenue. Equity. Oh, it right. is part of equity, um, but it's specifically revenue. It's okay. We've been doing this for 15 minutes. <laughs> is there anything you've ever been good at after 15 minutes? Right? No, not at all. It's fine. Um, equipment. The, but, but thinking through it, that activity of thinking while you're doing it is important to learning it. Equipment. Is it what asset. type of equipment is an asset? See, you know that. <laughs> Notes payable. Payable. Liability. Liability. It is a liability. Payable liability. Yes. Mm -hmm. Payable liability. Common stock. Equity. 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 Okay, now I did all those first because now when we talk about normal balances, now I'm going to say turn to page 69 in your book or look at that sheet that says debits and credits. Yeah. Um, if I have an asset, now see now, I don't have to worry about what's the normal balance for land, cash, legal expenses, prepaid expenses, accounts receivable, dividends. I just have to worry about what's the normal balance for an asset, an expense, equity, see? So what's the normal balance for an asset? What does an asset increase with, a debit or a credit? Debit. Yeah, right, so I'm over here. Okay, it increases with a debit. So it has a normal balance of a debit. And so does every single asset that we did. So you can go through and fill in any asset is a debit. That's why I did it this way. Sorry, can you explain again what like normal balance? Yep, uh, normal balance is whatever is, is either debit or credit, whatever increases that account. If the account increases with a debit, the normal balance is a debit. And the reason is like, let's say I was looking through, somebody needs to mute, please. Um, if I was looking through the general, the general um, ledger and I, and I noticed, you know, I'm looking at all the expenses and all of a sudden I see a debit instead of a credit, that can jump out as me as wrong because normally it's a credit. All right, so expenses, go back up to legal expenses. Does an expense increase with a debit or a credit? Debit. Mm -hmm. So the normal balance is a debit for any expense that we have, and that's the only one. Okay, so now equity, we, we can't do that with because we have dividends and we have common stock. So dividends, do I increase dividends with the debit or a credit? Debit. Debit. With the debit. So my normal balance for dividends is a debit. debit. Do I increase revenue with a debit or a credit? Credit. Credit. So my normal balance for revenue is a credit. Do I increase a liability with a debit or a credit? Credit. Yep. So my normal balance is a credit. We just did revenue. We just did liabilities. Equity, common stock. Do I increase common stock with a debit or a credit? Credit. Yep. So the normal balance to common stock is a credit. Then you can say check my work. And then my favorite thing happens, you get all these green checks. If it wasn't right, then you can say return to question and you can rework whatever was wrong. Oh, also, if you can't, like, if you can't get it right, if you click these little buttons down here, now you can skip through them. You don't have to like go in order. 
Okay, so wait. Oh, this is a multiple choice question. When you're working a question like this, <clears throat> It is my recommendation that you read the, so here, Goro Company pays, I would do it this way. Goro, good heavens, Goro <laughs> Company bills the client for what are we trying to figure out? The entry we make to record this transaction includes which one or more of the following. So I'm going to go here. We bill a client $62,000 for services provided and agree to accept the following three items in full payment, $10,000 cash, computer equipment worth 80,000, and assume responsibility for a $28,000 note payable related to the computer equipment. Oh my God, that's complicated. Okay, so my first thing, so what happened? We performed services worth $62,000. Instead of giving us cash, they gave us $10,000 cash and an $80,000 computer. That's quite a computer. But along with that $80,000 computer is a $28,000 note that's still owed that we're gonna have to pay. So the first thing I'm doing is it's like, okay, what accounts are affected? So first we have service revenue. What other accounts are affected? Cash. Cash. Equipment. Equipment. And a note payable. Did the service revenue increase or decrease? Did we earn more revenue now or less? It increased. It increased. Did our cash increase or decrease? Increase. It increased. Did our equipment increase or decrease? Increased. It increased. Did our note payable increase or decrease? We okay. owe that now. No, we owe it now. So we got the equipment, but we also got the note. So we oh. now owe $28,000. So we got the $80,000 no. equipment, but we have to pay $28,000 on the note. That is weird. What type of account is service revenue? Revenue. Equity. Both, yep. Oh, revenue. What type of account is cash? Asset. Asset. Yep. Asset. What type of account is equipment? Asset. Asset. Mm -hmm. What type of account is notes payable? Liability. Liability. Okay. If I, and that's all I need. So I'm going to look at the first one. Oh, you may select more than one answer. So I'm going to look at the first one. $28,000 increase in a liability account. Okay, so the only liability we have is this one. Actually, so let's write, you know what, let's write down the amounts here. <laughs> so service revenue was $62,000. Cash was 10,000. Equipment was 80,000. And our liability was 28,000. All right, now we have all the information we need. So was there a $28,000 increase in a liability account? Yes. Yeah, there was. Was there a $10,000 increase in the cash account? Yes. Yes. Was there a $10,000 increase in a revenue account? No. Was there a $62,000 increase in an asset account? No. Did you say no? Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. no. 
was there a $62,000 increase in a revenue account? Yes. 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 Wait. This doesn't have to check my answer. Okay, so this is how a T account works. Let's say that we had, let's say that we had a T account for cash. And we brought in $2,000 and we spent 500. And then we brought in another thousand and we spent another 500. And I asked you, how much cash do you have? How many numbers am I looking for? One if I number. say how much cash, one number, I want one number, right? If I say how much cash do you have? It's not, well, I had $200 when I left this morning, but then I, I spent $28 on lunch and, and I had to get gas, but I used my debit card for that. So, but then I gave that dollar bill to the homo, homeless man on the street. I want one number, <laughs> one. So that's the way these work. I increased $3,000, I decreased 1,000. So it's like, here's 3,000 increase, here's 1,000 decrease. So I'm gonna take the largest number minus the smallest number, which this one obviously you can do in your head, gives me 2,000. And then which is it, a debit or a credit? This one's a debit. So my balance in cash is a $2,000 debit. I want one number. So that's how we're gonna do the accounts payable. So quarantine company had $152,000 of accounts payable on September 30th and $132,500 on October 31st. So we're going to start with, here's our beginning balance of 152, oops. Here's our beginning balance of 152,000 because it's a liability. And 132,500 on October 31st which is, we're gonna have to, it, that should be our check figure. Total purchases on account during October were 281,000. So we have purchases that we made, purchases that we made on account for 281,000. All right, so what we're looking at here is we have a T account where we have accounts payable. We started with 152,000. We added 281,000. We want to have a balance of 132,500. So the question is, oh, I know why I'm slanting my tablet because my desk is small. So the question is, how do we get from, if we take 152,000 if we take 152,000 plus 281,000, that's 433,000. That these two together are 433,000. And we want to have 132,500. So how do I do that? How do I reduce this account? How do I reduce a liability? You debit it. I debit it. I want to debit it. So how much do I have to debit it for to end up with a balance of 132,500. 
300,500. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here and we're gonna say, if it's accounts payable, that must mean that we paid some of it off, right? So payments on account. So we made 300,000, 300, 300,500 as a payment on account. And our ending balance is 132,500. Does that one make sense? Yes. Okay. So, so here's, here's what I'm noticing. I'm noticing that the homework is really challenging. I'm going to see how it goes. Um, I think what I'm going to do is we'll go over the synchronous sessions and the homework on Thursday for chapters one, two, and three. We will, um, I will post a review for the quiz so that you can use that. I, I truly do not think that you can do, um, I truly do not think that you can do all the way through the accounting cycle and adjusting entries all in one week. Because right now, your focus this week should be on learning journal entries, debits and credits, what the accounts are, because all of those things take a lot of thought. So I would just focus on practicing that and then we will make sure that we do a complete review for both quizzes and you'll be all set by the end of next week. Make sense? Yeah, I don't, yes. I, I don't like the changes here. Um, okay, so I will see you Thursday at the same time. Okay, if you have questions, you can text me, especially right now I'm on vacation, sort of. Um, and I'm happy to help. We can, and we can log in like this anytime and look at stuff too. Like if you're doing something and you're struggling with it, I can log in and I can see the assignment that you're working on. And when I see the assignment that you're working on, I see the numbers that you put in. So I see where you're headed and what you're thinking. And so we can log in together and look at it and talk about it. So there's all kinds of resources there. I'm also going to go see why you can't see walk me through it problems. And other than that, I will see you on Thursday. I'll post this video in the morning, but I highly recommend that you, that you do go through the videos that are in the announcements. Okay? All right. I will see you on Thursday. Text me if you have questions, and I appreciate you coming. Thank you. Right. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.